Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop, stop COVID deaths. The topic is entitled Airborne or Aerosol, How is COVID-19 Transmitted? But take note that this is from an infection control perspective, uh, infection control from an engineering perspective. Now, if based on the World Health Organization, the virus is spread by infected secretions such as saliva and respiratory secretions or the respiratory droplets, which are expelled when an infected person coughs, sneezes, talks, or sings. Infection may result if droplets reach the mouth, nose, or eyes of a susceptible person. And well, if you can see this infographic here, shown are the common transmission node, modes. So we have the droplets coming in from an infected person, kumadapuan po yung mga kamay natin, and then ilalapat po natin sa, sa mata or sa ilong or sa bibig natin, yun po ang tawag natin na direct contact. However, if those droplets ay uh, babagsak po sa mga surfaces, they become contaminated, we call them fomites, and then we come in contact with those contaminated surfaces, we call it indirect contact. Uh, pwede din po, po yung fecal or oral, fecal oral na transmission mode where uh, from the bathroom, pwedeng ma-aerosolize po yung fecal droplets and pwede po tayo mahawa from there. But our focus today in is the droplets that are expelled into the air and the issue supposedly is it going to be airborne. Now the irony there is the, the, the discussion on airborne versus aerosol, there is actually no significant distinction between the two. And in fact, all of these still actually come from droplets. Now, depending on our activity, for example, talking, coughing, sneezing, they all emit different sizes of droplets. Okay, and para sa atin po, meron po tayong sizes ng droplets. Meron maliliit, may malalaki, and shown po dito sa top left on the picture are yung relative sizes, kung ano yung micron size, and kung ano yung mga, on the figure on the right naman po, is ano yung mga klase ng mga, or sizes ng droplets na naproproduce ang katawan. Okay, in such activities. And when you have, let's say, a, a cough or a sneeze, kadalasan, malalaki po yung droplets na nagagawa niyan. And in, you will see later on na babagsak po siya kaagad sa ground. Okay. However, there are smaller particles, which we call aerosols, that dials, they are a lot smaller, we call, they are more mobile. Okay? That even uh, minutes after they are expelled from the body, they will linger in the air, they will float, and depending on the air currents, they can travel farther and stay longer in the air and be active. As a demonstration, po, uh, this is a slide, this is a clip, video clip from NHK World Japan, where uh, we see the different sizes of droplets when a person sneezes. Okay, may malaki, yung very big white dots. But more importantly, meron tayong mga pinong-pinong droplets. Okay, and they linger. Okay, tumatagal po sila sa air and they are distributed okay, in ways that you cannot see. Take note po na ito mga maliliit po na droplets, hindi natin ito nakikita. Siguro ang nakikita lang natin ay yung mga droplets na from pag nag-hatching po tayo ay yung mga parang tulo na mga laway natin. No, that's too big. Okay, Those are very big droplets that, we, that can actually be, uh, say, uh, held back by our 
face shields or face masks. Now, this next this slide shows a simulation from scientists in Japan showing how big droplets will actually be spread uh, over time. And sinasabi po dito that the bigger droplets, itong yellow, green, and blue droplets, will actually fall to the ground in about less than a minute. Okay. So, uh, okay po yan kasi uh, uh, dito po nagagaling yung 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 initial studies dati about social distancing na two meters, one to two meters, okay na po tayo. Okay. However, if we look at other activities, ito po ang isang uh, uh, recording naman of the of usual talking lab. Okay. Um, kita kita po natin na may mga droplets na kumakalat, naglilinger in the air. Let me play that again. And they don't drop to the ground. They're just there. Now, another slide, okay, and from another uh, uh, source from the Washington Post, they had their own experiments as well. Ito, nakikita natin na yung exhalation po natin will produce micro droplets as well. Now, of course, some people would argue, well, we already have health protocols in place. For example, face masks. But face masks, napipigilin, napipigilan supposedly yung pagkalat, okay? And that's true, okay? Uh, we can expect that at least half of the droplets that we expel can be impeded by face masks. As shown here, even when a person sneezes, filtered out po yan. But these, there will be unideal cases. For example, if a face mask is not properly fitted or worn, this person here uh, is on a cell phone, ill-fitted po yung face mask niya, and you could see the plumes of micro droplets uh, going above, uh, on top and on the sides. So we should be aware that hindi po perfect yung, yung, yung certain measures like face masks natin. There are still certain risks okay, from aerosol distribution. So this is a simulation po on what happens when you, uh, when aerosols are transmitted into the air. Now take note, aerosols ito, in comparison to the bigger droplets kanina ng mga ching, ito mas maliliit. Okay. Ito mga red ngayon, mas pino, and they don't drop to the ground. Instead, they linger. And in this video, the simulation shows that even up to 20 minutes, ay nandun pa din. Okay. So this can travel meters away, way beyond the two-meter protocols natin. In fact, previous studies have shown that in just still air alone, we're up to eight meters. But I would actually beg to differ that if meron talaga tayong air currents, okay, may, may airflow po tayo, pwede siyang kumalat all across the room. Okay, so this is where the transmission controversy lies. There are droplets and there and then aerosols are smaller droplets. And the different studies, not everybody agrees on how and how much aerosols are actually produced. That's one. The other one is when we do expel a droplet, how many virus particles are in there? How many droplets are necessary to cause the infection? Now take note that I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm actually opening this discussion to our colleagues in the medical profession, but we have to agree that there is still certain ambiguity, okay? like how long do aerosols remain infectious when suspended in the air? I have read papers where the half-life of the virus is an hour, but another study said that it can be all the way up to eight hours in the laboratory. Okay, that's a huge discrepancy. And one of the biggest controversies is which is which transmission route, the be it 
direct contact, indirect, uh, droplet, or aerosol, is the most significant in a given situation. Now, even with the, the lack of agreement of the specific numbers, we have to, well, in general, I find that we all agree that the more time spent indoors with an infected person, the greater is the likelihood of transmission. And the, and the thing to take away from here is that we don't really always know if the person we are with is infected or not. There are symptomatic cases. We have seen cases where they may have been vaccinated, but then they, they still get sick and are symptomatic. Or if we're in a hospital situation, we are tending to patients, there is still a likelihood of transmission. Okay? And from my perspective, even if it is still not proven how, how great a degree that transmission through aerosol is, we cannot ignore it and instead we should just prepare for it. So these are the measures that we've done for infection control. On a personal level, we have personal protective equipment. So starting from the left, we start with face masks and then we have face shields to supposedly cover our eyes as well. And then our medical professionals, I've seen them with with half mask respirators for better filtration beyond the N95 and the surgical masks. And then we also see people donning full, what we call uh, powered, uh, powered air purifying respirators with the full protection. But these are on a personal level, okay? But from a matter of information to everybody, we have we still have to do administrative controls. Let's in this picture here where we instruct people what to do. Tamang distancia, uh, wear your masks. Okay. And the first two steps here are, will still require the cooperation of individuals. Now, if you're talking to, let's say, building administrators, unit heads, legislators, we should focus as well on the last two portions, which is engineering controls, where we have the opportunity and the resources and the means to, to set up the infrastructure, the structured environment to separate people from the pathogen and hopefully eliminate the pathogen entirely. Okay. So uh, just as highlight here, for example, is a very, uh, cluster, uh, very um, crowded office space. There are barriers here, but from an engineering perspective, I see that there are huge flaws here with respect to the ventilation, the air distribution, and what I see here, it might actually not actually be helpful at all in controlling the infection. So we have strategies, and these strategies have to be applied to different situations. We have our homes, dormitories, offices, church markets, Markets, hospitals, public places, public transportation, and iba iba po yung cases nila. Some are open air, some are indoors that are naturally ventilated by windows. Some po meron tayong mga ventilador, electric fans, and then meron naman tayong mga air conditioned offices and rooms. And depending po sa case na yun, we will apply the general strategies slightly differently. But in general, they have the following three main brackets. We have ventilation and air distribution. We have filtration and then disinfection and sterilization. For all these strategies to be implemented, we of course require certain equipment or interventions. Like for disinfection and sterilization, we are familiar with the concept of wiping down things with alcohol or disinfectant and sometimes fogging. And these generally address what we call indirect transmission. When people were in the room, they might have expelled particles. We can sanitize those areas by wiping them down. Okay. Unfortunately, this is not a continuous process. Kailangan gawin ito pag nakaalis na yung mga tao. 
Now there's another way to sterilize, uh, becoming more prevalent, for example, the ultraviolet germicidal radiation. Shown here are photos of UV radiation. Uh, this is an LRT where the UP College of Engineering actually partnered with them to provide us, uh, disinfection protocols and devices. And these help primarily again against indirect transmission. Now, I've also seen some devices where in UV po, I install, let's say in the air conditioning. And they also therefore try to um, uh, cut down on airborne transmission by killing the viruses in the air. Okay. Now, there are different devices available in the market and they have to be carefully selected. Kasi kung ultraviolet, there are specific doses lang that will actually kill the virus. And even specific types, there's UVA, UVB, UVC, and uh, the most effective and most practical is UVC. Okay. But you also have to take note that there are certain durations okay, on how much radiation and how long you expose a surface to for it to be properly sanitized. And that's just for the virus. There is some risk to the person. For example, uh, UV tends to produce ozone, which is bad to the health. And if the light actually hits the person, okay, there is uh, there is a risk to that particular exposure. So I will ask our uh, medical practitioners to focus on that maybe later on today. Now, for real-time interventions, we are more familiar possibly with filtration. So just like our masks, masks put not in our filters. But for the structured environment, we can put in something like air purifiers, where they actually have what we call filters that that grab the particles from the air so that they will no longer float around and infect us. And please be aware that not all filters are actually appropriate for the COVID situation. The, uh, we, we see ads about HEPA filters and all that, even the N95, but what do we really need? The World Health Organization and the CDC recommend a rating of at least MERV 13 or better. That means that it's uh, at least 95% uh, effective in capturing particles. But please be aware that the rating is based on the 0 0.3 micron level. Okay, now microns, yun yung laki po ng, ng kaya ng saloin. Okay. Uh, there are some, some HEPA filters out there claiming to be HEPA filters, but they're actually rated 95% or better, but mostly for dust particles where actually just a lot bigger, okay? So hindi sila suitable. So what I would recommend is something even higher than the World Health Organization na, na standard, which is a HEPA filter. Yung totoong, yung, yung totoong HEPA filter I would suggest an H13 na rating, which is a 99.95% na, uh, na rating. Okay. So shown here is actually such an example of um, in a, a filter that is installed on the ceiling of an office that allows the filtration of the air, even while it is being air conditioned. Okay. And the one of the, well, I like to highlight this particular product is because it is a lot bigger and more powerful than other kinds of air, air purifiers so that it was properly sized. Okay, it is to match the, the room, so there's proper selection and it is properly installed so that when you use it, it becomes both effective and economical. Okay, because we have to be practical about this. Eh? Okay. Uh, no point in buying anything if it's not both, okay? Now, moving forward, the biggest strategy actually is ventilation. Now, by definition, ventilation has three parts here. We try to replace the dirty air in the room by what we call bringing in of outdoor, which in general, we perceive as 
fresher, cleaner air. And to do that, we can simply open windows and doors. Because new or fresh air is coming in, we remove the virus-laden air. Fresh air in and contaminated air out. Of course, this implies na meron po tayong in and out yan. So meron tayong isang, let's say, pintana na pagpapasukan ng fresh air and maybe another door to let out the contaminated air. And if it's in a large room, it helps if there are fans and ducts to assist the flow of air. Where by doing the replacement of room air and removing the virus-laden air, ang end goal po natin is to lower the overall concentration of virus-containing particles in the air. We want to remove the ones that are recirculating or floating around. So I'll show you just a video here, okay, where these are particles floating around. Okay? But by the simple act of opening a window, in as little as a, a minute, evacuated the pula hat. Okay. Ganun lang po kasimple. And there are uh, for large rooms, we can suggest, for example, uh, fans, blowers, or filters. And we recommend a particular number, which we, which we call the number of air changes per hour. And the CDC and ASHRAE, Young Engineering Association for, for, uh, for Air Conditioning Controls, recommends at least 6 to 15 air changes per hour to replace 99% uh, of air in about an hour. Okay, so in six is a general number, po, but I have seen where for clean rooms, for hospitals, where it can go all the way up to 15. So wag lang po sana tayo bababa ng six. Now you might think, gano pa kahirap yung six changes per hour? In fact, it's, it isn't it. Tipong, uh, I will show examples later where a simple electric fan in a properly placed location can actually suffice. Now, let's start with what many of us are exposed to. For example, our offices and our, uh, let's say maybe hospitals, where the first scenario on the left, we have an air conditioner. Most air conditioners in the Philippines are split types. So, hindi actually siya connected outside to, to suck in fresh air. So, pag sarado po yung windows and doors natin, nag recirculate lang po yung, yung infected air. Okay. Ang default assumption kasi natin dito is, there is somebody possibly sick or carrying the virus in the room. And we do not know. Okay. So, we try as much as possible to avoid that recirculation. So we try to put in fresh air. So scenario number two is we open windows and doors okay, so that we what they call dilution of the air inside using clean air from the outside. And a natural airflow will come from the air outside the window at lalabas po sa doors natin. It will help, of course, kung meron po tayong exhaust fans. Now, in our offices, I'm, definitely there are bathrooms nearby, and almost always there are exhaust fans there. They will help. Okay, so, so there are simple measures to, to, even, to address or, uh, or to minimize infections via airborne transmission. Now, the important thing, the important keyword there is minimization because uh, we can only go so far in reducing the risk. Now, for a non-air conditioned environment, we have here the, the, let's say the household. Okay, so we can leave the doors and windows open, quite partially lang po, and they will let air in. And naturally, there will become, there will be currents, air currents. Na importante po dyan ay may meron sana in and out. Okay. 
It would also be better kung meron po tayong exhaust fans to help evacuate the contaminated air. And if meron po tayong extra fans to improve the circulation of air from the outside and avoid pockets of stagnant air forming indoors. Now, medyo uh, maraming gray areas po pagdating sa fans, ha? kasi uh, ang typical practice po natin is pag mainit, itapat natin yung electric fans atin. So, we cannot be sure if the air that is reaching our faces is coming from an infected person. Okay? So, there is some compromise possibly in what the comfort that we are used to. Okay? However, uh, we, uh, there are there are slight adjustments lang po. Now, we don't necessarily need large currents and preferably the currents are going from what we call clean air ang papunta sa inyo lang. Okay? Kung meron po tayong ceiling fans, uh, there are, uh, kindly check your models ng, ng ceiling fan niya. Kung pwede na, invest na pababa yung buga ng hangin, it actually sucks air upwards so that if there are infected people down below the fan, it actually removes contaminated air from them and is sent out, hopefully, to the open windows and doors. Okay. Now, take note that we have uh, case-to-case -case basis data, which we will be, uh, we can try to address later on in our discussions. Now, the important thing with ventilation is not just bringing air in and evacuating it because that it will take some time to do that with ventilation the biggest portion there is the direction as well especially in big rooms we try to do what we call the the an air movement flowing from a clean to a less clean direction uh, an example to that Outdoor air is generally accepted to be cleaner compared to, let's say, air na, na dumaan na sa tapat ng isang office mate mo. Okay? Because we wouldn't know who is infected or not. So in summer, we need, to, we need to minimize the potential to create air patterns na will directly flow across one person onto another. And... Uh, of course, that implies we try to avoid recirculation. So the, the photos here are actually different scenarios. Um, the one on the top right is where, for example, at two, two people are in a small room with a window and a door that is open. This is actually coming from a recent study by Professor Ken Fernandez and Dr. Maynard Barana from the Mechanical Engineering Department, where they actually evaluated the effects of of pl the placement of a simple electric fan, kung nasa bintana ba or nasa pinto, kung pabuga ba or pahigop yung electric fan, and how much air does it actually bring into the room and uh, how much air is brought out. An important part of their study shows also about yung particles that are circulated in the air. Okay, so this picture was shown na there is a huge risk pa rin talaga if your uh, people are laid out in a certain scenario where in the same direction of flow sila sa hangin. Okay, yung, yung layout nila. Ganon din sa baba, okay? Uh, yung sa top, bottom left na photo, you have an air con uh, a classroom. Naka-social distance po sila. Okay, but... In the case where it's just one window that's open, sinabi ko nga kanina, buksan, magbukas tayo ng, pin, ng bintana, di ba? But if it's just one pero kulub naman pa rin, there's, walang paglalabasan, if there's somebody in the room na may sakit, in, in this case, the, the one in the front of the classroom, his yung dark red na contaminated air will continue to recirculate, which is bad. Okay, kasi madadapuan yung mga kaklase niya. Now, the, the other study on the right 
where this is for a restaurant where you properly locate the duct the yung buga po ng aircon at saka yung higop ng aircon so that the pockets of air are isolated are isolated to those people lang at hindi kakalat sa kabilang tables ang magandang example nga nabanggit uh, kanina during our previous discussions kagaya yung sa like yung sa, mga, yung sa mga Korean restaurants na meron tayong exhaust fan in the middle. That's actually a good example of, if you notice, medyo isolated actually siya ng air, the air flow. Now, um, similar slide, but the one on the bottom left is actually something applicable to buses and public transportation, where the agreed strategy actually, recommendations for buses is that you have the, the, the air from the air conditioner, yung malamig po na hangin, ay manggagaling sa taas. Pero rather than higupin siya in general sa likod, dapat maglagay sana ng mga exhaust vents sa paanan ng mga, ng mga pasahero para isolated po yung hangin sa kanila lang at hindi mag-cross sa mga ibang pasahero. So direction of airflow is critical in these studies. Now, um, there are so many scenarios actually. We cannot spend the entire time in, to, to list out all of these scenarios and recommend. So there are common strategies. Take note that they are on a case-to-case -case basis. For example, for non-air-conditioned offices and rig stations, I did mention that to open the door and window on opposite sides, if there are a lot of windows, it is recommended to try to relay out those workstations to be beside the windows para yung, yung dadapo sa inyo na hangin ay malinis. If it's even possible to put, let's say, exhaust fans or ducts behind that person, so from the window to the person to the exhaust, maganda yun. Okay, so higop ka agad at hindi na pupunta sa ibang mga office mates niya. Now, this number four item here is a bit counterintuitive. We normally uh, 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 we normally see barriers, yung mga acrylic barriers that that impede yung droplets, yung big droplets natin. Let's say from direct contact, yung yung direct uh, expulsion ng droplets into our faces. That's fine. However, please be aware that these barriers can actually impede airflow. So, pwede makakaroon ng increasing concentration of viruses in one particular area, stagnant po yung air, hindi, hindi gumagalaw. And uh, those pockets should actually be evacuated. Dapat na hihigop palabas yun. So, uh, may, may give and take po, may, may pros and cons po with, uh, with putting barriers. Now, of course, kung alam naman natin kung me na meron tayong infected people, the common sense there is we should place them downstream of the airflow. Um, yung figures on the right, the top, uh, the, mi the middle right shows the same study. Okay? And gleaned are actually the numbers taken from such a study where what will happen if you put an electric fan in different places. And this is just a standard electric fan, huh? and uh, the air changes for us. Sabi ko nga, six nga lang minimum natin, di ba? But their studies found that if properly located at either the door or the window, you can have as much as 59 air changes per hour. And depending on the location as well, pakonti an naman yung gusto natin na natitirang recirculated particles in the air. So from a... Uh, for a, uh, my recommendation, for example, is to have the, the air diluted so that less particles are recirculated. But of course, it is really the best to have both what you call a push and pull scenario, meaning may papasok po na hangin and meron palabas na hangin. Now, for, now if we have air-conditioned offices, there's always that argument na Kung buksan po natin yung bintana at saka mga pinto, lalabas yung malamig na hangin, lalatataas yung kuryente natin. 
I have to admit that that is a small price to pay, kuryente natin, compared to the health of our employees. So it is still recommended na kahit buksan nilang kahit konti, okay, yung windows. Now, in, if in the case where you know na hindi talaga kaya, there are some offices there, nakakabolt down yung mga bintana, we try con to consider filters, okay, just like the one here shown, na may preferably multiple ducted inlets where you can have hoses na in certain clusters. Similar to yung example ko nga, yung dun sa mga Korean restaurants, yung samgipsal. Okay. Um, tingnan nyo lang po yun. Uh, if it's possible, you can try to lay out your workstations in a single ring clustered around an exhaust or a filter. So kahit magkaharap man sila, kung meron mang droplets na ma-release yung tao, invest na abot doon sa kabilang employee ay higo pinakaagad ng filter. But take note that kailangan malakas din yung filter natin. Ha? Hindi yung basta-basta lang ng mga maliliit na filters na nakikita natin na pang USB lang. Kasi they have to be properly sized. Because if the air around you is not entirely clean, it is still possible that these filters will actually produce air currents that will bring dirty air to you. Okay, so sizing of the filter is very critical. So, uh, even the undersizing of a filter and bringing it close to you might actually produce bad effects. Okay, so again, sizing is important. Yung tinatawag po natin na air changes per hour. Um, in terms of cost, these are the initial costs. So technically, wala naman dapat cost sa pagbukas ng bintana or mga pinto or even opening vents. A slightly higher cost would be implementing or using fans to increase the effectiveness of the windows and reposition them to create directional airflow. Um, there was one application before where there was one particular smoky room and our colleagues were thinking, how do we actually quickly remove smoke from that room where kulubsha, it's like the room is inside a, a building where there's only one door. And the recommendation namin was, well, sadyain yun na merong papasok talaga na forced na hangin and then meron isa pang fan that actually sucks air out. Okay. So fans are relatively inexpensive. Now, a medium cost is to add filtration systems. And in general, uh, they can be used to actually supplement the, the capacities the air conditioners natin that we, we, know, we normally kasi think that our air conditioners are, can provide the air flow that we need. To be honest, no, okay? That's a huge misconception where most air conditioners do not let in fresh air. Even if they do, the fresh air that comes from those tiny holes in those air conditioners like the window types are not sufficient to produce the six air changes per hour. Adding a filter that is properly sized can actually improve that, uh, improve or, or supplement so that we satisfy po yung six air changes natin per hour. The cost area one is adding UV. Now, these are, of course, the initial costs, but you might have to just balance these initial interventions for both the initial cost and the operating cost to provide the most economical and effective way of controlling the transmission of the virus. Marami po talaga mga measures dyan, and we would like to invite actually the participants to discuss with us, panelists, uh, so that uh, we can provide further insights. Okay, but very least, thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you, everybody. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe. Stay connected. 
and, and see you online. online.